All right. Uh, so this is it. This is uh, what we've been working on for 15 weeks. Your uh, capstone presentations of your final projects. So uh, I don't want to talk too much up top. We'll just get to it. Um, would anyone like to volunteer to go first? I think we'll do this popcorn style. I don't mind going first. All right, go for it. Cool. Um, well, I did the uh, video recording suggestion, so we'll just get YouTube here. I think there is like one spot where I'll pause and say something because there was something I noticed while, as I was recording um, and then I fixed it afterwards, but I didn't want to go and just like re-record a whole new video. Um, but yeah, and then just, yeah, give me a shout if the the audio isn't coming through, but I, I tested it earlier and it should be fine. And yeah, you guys saw a lot of this, but it's a little newer. And here we go. Welcome to concert. Uh, this is my uh, capstone project, obviously. Um, a bit of a passion project as well. The main intention behind concert is that it's kind of a personal use app for you know, logging, tracking, remembering details about all the concerts and music festivals that a user might attend. It's also a, a quasi-social app, so you do have the ability to look at other users and see you know, what are their concerts and their festivals that they've attended over the years. The you know, main intention is that it's for personal use. That's why I call it quasi-social. There are plenty, if not too many, other apps out there for us to like deeply engage and, and you know message and comment and you know bother you know all the all the other people on the internet. So I didn't feel like I needed to create a whole another truly social app, but it's obviously fun to see what your friends are up to. So added a little bit in there as well as we'll see here in a bit. But when you first come to concert, the uh, login page is where you're going to start. You're obviously prompted to log in, or if you don't have an account, you can sign up for one with some basic info, name, you can add a bio, uh, you can you know, change your bio and then update it later if you don't know what's right here. You have a username and a password. There is a little bit of validation in place with both the sign up and the login. So like, you know, let's say I want to make that my password. It's going to tell me, hey, well, we can't do that. It's got to be at least eight characters. Similarly, if I you know try to log in and I put the wrong password and tell me, hey, you got to invalid username or password, or, you know, if I were to put the wrong username, the right password, and vice versa. Uh, that stuff's in place. But I'll go ahead and actually log in, obviously using test data for these passwords. But when you first log in, you're brought to uh, the timeline page, which functions as the, the home page. And it is simply a timeline view of all of my concerts and festivals that I've uploaded into the system ordered uh, just chronologically by date. So typical timeline, you know, it's going to start with the oldest at the top and most recent at the bottom. I also have the ability to toggle that view uh, to not be a timeline, but rather just a sorted list of the things I have rated the highest down to the things that I have rated uh, the lowest down at the bottom. And, you know, I really like this because like I go to a lot of concerts. That's why I wanted to create something like this. And people are always asking like, what was the best one? You know, who all have you seen lately? And I'm like, oh, geez, like I go to so many, like so many of them are so good. I can't remember what are the best, um, but now I have these ratings, obviously very subjective ratings, but it's a way for me to sort of quantify, uh, you know, what did I think was the, the best shows that I've been to lately. Um, but I can easily toggle between, you know, favorites and timeline with that button up there. Got my nav here on the left. So I'm just going to move down in order here, uh, go to my concerts, which is just a, you know, large compilation of, all of the concerts that I've uploaded to the system. This does not include festivals. This is only the concerts. We've got a number of ways to interact with this list here at the top. So I can search by, you know, the artist name. Obviously, as more and more data gets added in and this list becomes longer and longer, the search becomes a little more useful. If I'm looking for a specific one, I have the ability to filter by uh, by the year. Kind of, you know, arbitrarily, I started that at 2016. You know, all the data in here though is for uh, 2022. 2023. I can also uh, either independent of a year filter or on top of a year filter add a venue filter. So I can say, okay, in 2023, what are all the shows I saw at Red Rocks? I can see those all here. Now, you notice as I hover on any of these from any view, doesn't need to be just in the filtered view. 
So as I hover, we get a couple of buttons that become available to delete or edit. Um, I'll show you those in a sec. But first, uh, we also have this form here to add a new concert. So let's go ahead and add one that I've prepared here. Going to ask for a date, and the dates also have a uh, validation in place. So it is going to require year, month, day format. That was just kind of what I needed to get the timeline sorting to work relatively easily. And so if I try to go in here and just do kind of how I, you know, typically as an American would would date things, I would, you know, say 12, 22, 20, I'm trying to add that. It's going to tell me, hey, your dates uh, are not in the right format. I'm giving you the opportunity to try again. So We'll go ahead and let me actually find what the date was for this one. Um, or actually, let's here, I'll, I'll add in just a, an incorrect date and we'll use that as an update example. But we'll go give us X04, let's say. Uh, this one was at Globe Hall. Uh, I have the option to add an opener. It's not required. Um, I don't remember who it was. So I'm going to leave that one blank and just skip to grab an image off of the web. I also have the ability to add a set list if I want. Again, not required. Um, I'll show some examples of that uh, here in a bit. Uh, and then I can give it a rating. And I can say, you know, this was you know, 7.6. Comments, uh, you know, very fun. Cool flamenco style guitar covers. Hey, my friend JC was in town. We, we had a blast uh, hanging out with this one. And my date is incorrect. I got stuck in slash mode there. Put a dash and upload my new concert, which we'll see now at the bottom here. So very, very, uh, you know, typical, you know, simple form there. Um, but I can go ahead and say, okay, I, I know that that date is wrong. So let's go ahead and click the edit, which is going to pull up this form. Couple of notes here, you know, only just the fields you want to update it. It pulls in the existing metadata already. Uh, add new comments, right? All right, this is where I'm going to pause and say um, the thing I changed was uh, this was related to a, a previous change I made, but I used to have to add a venue to a concert, you would use it, uh, do it by the ID number. Um, and I changed that in the other locations where there's just a drop down with the names of the venues that you can select. So you don't have to worry about some random number that as a user means nothing to you. Um, so in the actual current version of it, this third input here uh, just says venue and it's a drop down with all the, the venue names. It's not the, the ID. Um, and I think that was the only change I made post recording, but all right, back to the video. So tell me, hey, if you want to keep this comment, just leave it there and, and add stuff on top of it. Uh, and then again, another warning about the date. But we'll go ahead and add that date. That was in March. And I can update. Boom, we'll get another quick refresh. And March 25th, 2023, now shows there. Uh, I also, as you saw, I can delete. This will prompt you to confirm if you want to delete it because it cannot be recovered. So I can click yes, or I can say no, I want to keep that one. Uh, again, kind of typical uh, delete flow there. The next page here we have is festivals. Very similar, just an aggregate list of all the festivals. Uh, these are ordered alphabetically. Uh, so I tried to, obviously I forgot on a couple to include the year. So it's gonna help with the, the ordering there. Um, again, I can search for things. If there's more data in here, the search becomes more and more valuable. I have the ability to add a festival, which has slightly different metadata from a concert. Again, I'm going to have some validations around the dates, start and end, to make sure that they are in the correct format. And then the cool thing about the festival cards here is I can hit show details and get this pop up uh, where I can see the details a little bit clearer, as well as a list of all the artists that I saw at that festival. And these again have some similar metadata to the concert, you know, image name, give it a rating. You can put a set list here uh, if you want, as well as your comments. If I want to add more artists to, you know, any particular festival, you can click that add artist and get a similar form to the ones we've seen before with all the metadata uh, that you would need to add an artist. All right, I'm 
want to go back here. One more thing. So I forgot to show uh, the set list here. So you saw on both a festival artist as well as a concert, you have the ability to add set list. Um, that's just a link to you know this website I use a lot, setlist.fm, where people you know keep track of all the set lists for an artist and their their different shows that they played. Uh, but moving down the list on the nav here, we'll go to venues next. This is again another simple page, just a compiled list of all the venues that are in the system. So these are ordered alphabetically first by the city they're in, and then alphabetically by the name of the venue. If you don't see the venue that you know, you're trying to add a concert to, I can add the venue here at the bottom. Super simple, name, location, and an image. And then if I upload a new venue, we're going to start to see that one pop up, uh, both in the filter list here, as well as in the add concert list here. Uh, the next is Concert Buddies. This is kind of where we get into the quasi-social uh, aspect of the application. Uh, this is you know, the last thing I, I kind of just added, so it is a MVP version of itself. But from what I've got so far is you can select from other users in the system a Concert Buddy and then view their timeline. So this is, again, an MVP. The, the hope for the future is that it becomes more of a kind of followers following thing, similar to any other social app where I choose to follow another user. And then once I have a list of people I'm following, those would become the only folks that I see listed here to select from as opposed to you know, all the users in the system. But a nice simple way to somewhat engage with another user, right? Not directly, but just to kind of check in, hey, what are my friends up to? What have they been seeing lately? Um, and, and have uh, some fun by, by just seeing what other people are up to. And then last but not least, the or maybe least, the account page, a very simple account page uh, with some of the user metadata, username, bio. You have the ability to make some changes here. Uh, you know, if you want your name in the system to be different, your bio you can change, your username you can change. Super simple update form here. A quick counter. Uh, this just kind of automatically updates as I add more concerts and festivals. That counter is going to take up and up. You know, if I start deleting things, it's going to take down. This gray button just has a, a little bit of a blurb just about you know my love of of live music you know how this you know this became you know somewhat of a passion project or right? it was a project for school obviously but i wanted to build something that i you know and my friends might actually use and around a subject matter that's interesting to me uh, and then last but not least log out and you get brought back to your uh, login page here so you know i can go in and log in as a different user All right see that users concerts and festivals, right? You can go from there, uh, their profile and view, you know, the, the previous profile we were looking at under the concert buddies um, and get some of that uh, that social aspect there. So yeah, that is concert. Uh, I had a lot of fun building this. Obviously, I you know, tried to pick a, like I said, some subject matter that's already very, you know, important and, and, and you know, deeply kind of ingrained uh, in, in my love of music. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much. Awesome. That's badass. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about the, the blurriness. I think the even let's explain the next video. Hold on. <laughs> uh, yeah. The next um, just, you know, I'm doing it live on a, a screen share, I think was taking some bandwidth. So we had a nice, you know, whatever, 420 P. <laughs> um, but yeah. Any questions? Oh, so we're all good. <laughs> you can go see it, watch it later if you want to. Um, awesome. Uh, anything else you want to say about it? Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, it was, it was fun, right? Like I, I tried to do this and, and I think succeeded with all the projects of like just picking an underlying topic that is already something I like in, in my, you know, non coding life. Um, and that just makes it more fun and like, you know, if it was something that I found boring, you know, I wouldn't have had those times of where I, you know, I'm laying in bed and can't fall asleep and like, oh yeah, like, let me go. I'm going to go try that. And like had this, you know, excitement element to, to kind of each thing I did. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, so obviously I did like react recoil um, and I did some semantic uh, and some regular CSS on the front Um I think same as everyone on the back, just you know, Flask and SQL Alchemy and uh, and Python. But yeah, I, I want to kind of keep tinkering with this, um, you know, as I'm going through the job process, um, just to kind of maybe add some 
you know, like make the the social feature more akin to something that you'd see in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, but I did that kind of last, that was a, a stretch goal anyways. Um, and maybe just say there's a couple things that like right now you technically can't make changes to certain parts, um, but I could easily add that. I just was like, okay, I want to move on to the next feature and make sure I got as much of the, the cool stuff I wanted in there. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's cool. I'm happy with it. <laughs> I hope you guys liked it. Uh, what questions do we have? Looks really awesome, Travis. Um, it looks like modern and sleek, like an actual real website that you might visit for for concert information sharing. Uh, I love the Red Rocks photo on on the homepage, yeah. uh, but the, the layout. I thought I thought you did a really really good job with it and. And everything works. So rule number one, knocked out of the park. And I think some of the other rules you uh, adhere to as well. So yeah, nice work. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, yeah, everything works. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It's I'm sure it's smelly in places because there were things where I was like, you know, trying to do, you know, the same type of thing, like like the timeline display, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, instead of fully generalizing it, I just you know copy and paste it from the the working timeline to create the second one um so there's things like that i i could improve upon but and then yeah i picked just I like i'm not a designer so i'm like i don't know what colors like but i know black and white <laughs> work together and and they look to me they're just kind of the super simple and also kind of a badass color scheme in my mind so i'm glad you liked it nice anything else all right, great stuff. Uh, who would you like to go next? Um, let's go with uh, Ryan. Awesome. You're up. All righty. Um, my video is a lot shorter, and I probably forgot some stuff, so I also pulled up the project on the back. So if we have questions, I can do that after. We cannot hear your audio if your audio is playing. Uh, okay. Um... And, and bcrypt for passwords. There we go. Hello, and welcome to my demonstration for Flatiron School's Capstone Project, the bootcamp for software engineering. My name is Ryan Linder, and this is a full full stack application made with front end text of React, Recoil, Cascading Style Sheets, and Semantic, and some back end text with Python, Flask, Flask RESTful, SQL Alchemy, and Bcrypt for password storage. It's a place for tracking points scored on game nights with displays to show all the games played, everyone's points and standings, and the current point leader. Main information is displayed on the player scores tab. You can sort by the total points, sort by the average placement, and sort by wins. You go over to the game list. It shows all of the games that are in the database across all users. Uh, you don't have to sign up or log in to add a game to the database, which I thought was kind of fun. It's a little bit of chaos added into my full stack application. You can sign up or log in using those buttons. You can log out with that button. Go ahead and log out, log back in. My name is test. My password is also test. Don't tell anybody. And then we can go and do our inputting of scores into the database. All of this is, it comes with helpful drop downs to kind of make the flow of information make sense on the inputs. You can put in points and placements. You can add a new game that will show up here when you select the games. You can put a new session that will show up here when you want to select a new played game. And all of the games are taken from the board game database that's back over here. 
apart from that, everything's pretty straightforward. It's just a little full stack app with a database and a bunch of models to make this sort of uh, analytical data very accessible. Thanks for checking in. <laughs> All righty. And then we have it over here. Uh, yeah, anything else you'd like to say about it? Um, I didn't do any of the like delete stuff, but I mean, I also don't want to because this is actually like <laughs> my real data. Yep. So, yeah, I promise it works. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it looks really good. Um, questions and or comments. Can uh, any log in, logged in user delete any player? Uh, no, you have your okay. own set of players. Got it's only it, okay. the only the board games that you can add to, and nobody can delete those. Okay, cool. Yeah, not not total chaos, but yeah, I like it. it looks great, Ryan. Yeah, just like a little chaos off in the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Anything else? I say, uh, especially with games, like me and my friends, when we play games, you know, we like you inject a little bit of chaos. Otherwise, it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> What else we got? All right, good stuff. Who would you like to go next? Uh, does anybody want to go next? I don't mind. I can go. Go for it. Cool. Um, so I did record mine, but I've then I rewatched it a couple times, and now I hate it. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna just do it live. Um, it looks very similar to the last time I presented, um, and I'll address that, uh, but just going over, uh, again, CSS is my favorite part, background, fade, uh, and, and this stuff, I just think it's really cool. I, every time I, I load up the website to start working on things, I first play with it for a little bit and just like look at all the stuff that moves. Um, but on the chess page, you can select the time and what color you want to play as on this page. This is where the chess is played, um, and it works flawlessly you can check me uh if you you know it's not white's turn if white tries to move it'll tell you that you can't move um uh you can promote pieces you can choose which piece to, piece to promote to you can now forfeit and draw with a little drop down um and then you can change like the board scheme color and uh, and all that stuff there is a code to invite a friend uh much like last time it doesn't work this is still a demo that's something that's going to take me a bit more time. Um, and since this looks, oh, and I guess I, I can also show up the dark mode. Uh, my ninja, the dark mode is, is purple and, and black instead of uh, pink and white. Um, and so the when it comes to the multiplayer part, that part uh, was, I wouldn't say it was too difficult, but it was, I think it was just more of a time constraint. Like I didn't do enough research to, uh, about how to do that to realize I didn't have time. Um, and, I, and it's something I do intend on finishing, um, uh, as well as adding some other things. I wanted to, like, if I if if I could go back and, like, do these three weeks again, I probably would have decided last week on, on Friday or even Wednesday that, like, okay, I'd, I might not be able to get the live chess part down, so I'm going to finish working on the rest of the website um, and then and then come back to this later. So I really wanted to add a blog part where people could, you know, talk, discuss different chess things. I wanted to add like a a page where you can like learn like strategies and different things with with graphics and, and information um, and in a stats page. So like every time you played a game against someone, then those games would be saved and you could go back and look and like figure out which moves were good moves and, and how you could have played better. Um, so those are things that I wanted to add uh, that I still intend to add. But uh, I spent all my time working on the, the chess functionality instead. Uh, and, you know, I got like 60% of the way there. The, it's just the connecting part that I still have to work on. Um, so then other than those things, that's my website. Uh, and, and yeah, that's it. Awesome. Cool. Sweet. Um, what questions do we have about this? I have some of folks. Yeah. I don't have a, a question, but I... 
I know, you know, and you said you didn't get like the the multiplayer working, but I'm still incredibly impressed at like the fact that it knows where each place or each piece can move to and it knows when you're in check and like I could be wrong, but that sounds very complicated. <laughs> to me. Um, it was it was a, a process. I did use like a a, a chess.js library mm -hmm. that does a lot of the work for uh, for me. Um, but I that was a blessing and a curse because I think one of the major problems I have is that a lot of the chess logic is in the front end and not the back end. Mm -hmm. um, and so if once I do get the multiplayer part working initially. Um, I think that'll cause problems if people like inspect element and they can change that, how things work and the moves aren't validated at the back end. So if they do mess something up, then that can cause problems and have like each board show something different. Um, so that is a potential hurdle that I see. Uh, but it is, it, uh, it was fun to put together. Yeah, no, I, I think it's cool. Man. And is that a little chat, uh, window on the, the right? Yes. Oh, nice. I this know. I didn't want to show it off because it because it, it works weird. But when you say something, it it moves the chat box down instead of moving the chat part up. I don't know why it does that. <laughs> so, uh, so cool. you can talk trash while you're playing people in chat. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Cool. Anyone else? Sweet, good stuff. Who would you like to go next? Oh, I'll pass it to uh, Wes. Awesome. Take it away. All right. Start talking pets. I also recorded a short video uh, demoing my website, but I'm going to come at you live because I just, uh, I don't like listening to the sound of my own voice recorded. I can listen to myself talk all day, but listening to it recorded is just a little, uh, I don't know, mildly uncomfortable for me. <laughs> I don't have too many of those issues, but it, I feel goofy listening to my own voice recorded. So here it is, Pet Adoption Connect. Uh, looks a little bit different than when I uh, presented last week. Added some styles, changed some fonts around, changed the color scheme, added, I mean, who doesn't love orange cats bouncing around their nav bar? Uh, just for fun. It was fun to figure out how to how to um, put that in there and, and make things move. Um, with these transparent uh, PNG images. Uh, so as you know, there's still dark mode. I also changed, I changed up the color scheme on that. I got some inspiration from, from Dominic, you know, not just go to straight to black with white text, you know, so I uh, updated the color scheme on my dark mode. So uh, this is where you go when the page loads, the home page. Uh, so I should just log out. So it's, it, this is what you actually see if you visit and you're not logged in. Uh, every time you visit the homepage or refresh, it shows you uh, four featured pets randomly selected from the database. So every time I refresh, you see four different fuzzy little critters. Uh, and there's the search functionality. So if you want to see all of the male dogs, you can do that. The breeds... Uh, and age and name are kind of open. So if there's not something matching your search criteria, you're not gonna get any, any results. Uh, so let's go ahead and, well, let's register. So I can show you that functionality. Uh, we'll register, I'm just gonna make something up. Uh, how about as, uh, I already have a WP, I already have, uh, let's see if I can do, you know, I'll, Use my wife, P. Peters, and then I'll do a password for her. Uh, something I'll remember, and I'll throw in a example email. I'm going to register as an owner because then she'll have the ability to post a pet. If I click that now, it'll. I think I the little alert pops up saying you might you must be registered and logged in as an owner. Uh, contact information. I didn't add validation for that. In the real world, I definitely would uh, have fields for name, address, or you know, address, phone number, and make sure that data is validated. Uh, but the username and password have validation, so the username has to be 
five to 20 characters. Password has to have capital letter, lowercase letter, and a number. It has to be a valid email address. I could show you that validation if you want to see it. Uh, I'll go ahead and save it, and then I'll log in as her. That's another thing, too. I think uh, I kind of saved some of this extra stuff because I know what's going to happen as I'm looking for a job and not coding anymore is I'm going to start forgetting everything. So I'm like, okay, I know when I get used to working on the same project long term, as might happen in a job, uh, and just keep adding stuff to this while I'm going through the the job process and, and a job search process and make it better. So that's one thing that I know that it's on my list is once you successfully register, it'll you'll be logged in. You don't have to go in and log in again. Uh, how many people register for something and immediately forget their password? Uh, so we'll post a pet. Uh, I'm just going to use some of this data that's already here that I've used before. Do Rex the Vishla. Make him a male, uh, no medical conditions, healthy dog, and we'll submit. Okay, pet posted successfully, and then that brings up his pet detail page. Uh, and then if you either search for male dogs or search for uh, Vishla, et cetera, or view all available pets, he should be down here at the bottom. Uh, see, there's a little, little bit of an effect depending on which pet card you hover on, but he should be at the bottom of the list of all currently available pets. And since I'm logged in as his owner, only the person, the user logged in as a pet owner can see this, these features. So I can go ahead and update his details. I can say, you know, he's he's got the flu uh, and he's been adopted. And I could submit that. So pet updated successfully. And then also as his owner, I can delete him from the database. So seeing create, read, update, delete on a pet. Uh, I can also see if I've got any messages. This is a brand new user, no messages in her inbox. So I'm going to log out and I'll log back in as uh, as another user just for fun. I think this is also a pet owner. Not that it makes much difference with the message functionality. Um, oh, and this user is actually this this pet's owner. So let's see, got that functionality. Uh, but if she clicks on another pet, she cannot update or delete his details, but she can see the owner's name. So she could send that owner a message. Uh, but I, here's my message inbox. Uh, here we go. Here's, there's obviously faker messages. Uh, but this is a real one. So I could say, I can reply to that message and it takes me to this message function with the recipient's name already filled out. So they wanted to meet the cat, sure. How about tomorrow? Send it. And then I think I have to refresh, but there it is. Message at the bottom to N. Miller, sure. How about tomorrow? Uh, let me also log out real quick and I'll log back in as, uh, as a pet. Adopter, potential adopter. Oops, I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to use my fingerprint. I don't know the password. It's saved in there. Okay. So there's an Ann Miller's inbox. He's got the message. How about tomorrow? Oh, there, there's the most recent one. How about tomorrow? I've obviously tested with this user before. Uh, but now as a pet adopter, if you're logged in and you click on a certain pet's detail, Oh, I want to meet Daisy the Bulldog. She looks sweet. So I can also just send a message to the owner, Charles18. We go, his name filled out. Um, and I think that's the the gist of the kind of fun functionality. Uh, the stuff that was trickier to code. This is the easier stuff. Posting some resources, little articles looking for dogs, dog breeds. Uh, what else? So, you know, I think in the, one, of the, one of the things I'm gonna add as I keep going uh, in the coming weeks as I'm on the job hunt uh, is 
the ability like Travis has to update user information. And now I have it once you're registered, you can't change any information. So I'll try to add some of that functionality, uh, make it look a little bit cooler, uh, add maybe the, the section that I was talking about where uh, an animal shelter can create its own profile and, and add some pets uh, or at least links to its own uh, database. At the same time, I kind of, I come, I come, I'm fumbling with that a little bit because the whole idea is to prevent an, uh, pets from ending up in animal shelters where they might be euthanized and, you know, just save them from that whole terrible, stressful situation. Uh, but that is the, uh, that's the gist of, of the website. And it was uh, fun to, fun to make it and fun to share it with you guys. Awesome. Um, that's you cool. <clears throat> a lot of stuff happening there. <laughs> yeah. <fun. laughs> Um, yeah, questions, comments. Who doesn't love this little guy? No. <laughs> All right. Yeah, looks great. Um, got nothing to ask about it. So cool. Um, All right. Thank you. Who would you like to go next? Uh, I will pass it on to Juan. Way one. Right. So I don't have a video recording, so I'm just going to pull it up here live. So this is my food delivery app. And it's a <laughs> SpongeBob theme, so I called it Underwater Eats, and it has a little nice. SpongeBob sky background. But just go ahead and sign in here. Okay, so this is the home page. You have a list of all the restaurants here. It's still similar to how I presented uh, the last week. It's just a lot more um, styled now. But here we have the menu items, and then we have reviews left by people um, from the restaurants. And we can just look here, take a look at all the, the menus here. But yeah, then I can add some stuff to my cart. Say I want to add this foot long, a Krabby Patty, and some kelp fries. Then I can go here to the cart, and then I have a list of everything that's here. And then I have this little counter here that can increment how much stuff of a certain item I have. And then it also increases or decreases the price depending on what you do. And I can just take stuff out. And if I go to my account here, I have the profile picture. And then I have all the, the past orders. I was struggling a little bit here on this section because I wanted to show like the actual names of the other, sorry, <laughs> the names of all the items that they had in the cart. But I was having a little trouble figuring that out. But I'm going to continue to work on that because I don't want to just leave it just like this. But if we go here, check out, and then that gets posted down here. And let's see what else can I show you guys? Um, let's say I have some stuff in my cart already from this restaurant, from the Krusty Krab. If I want to get stuff from somewhere else, I got some inspiration from Travis, and I made a a modal, and it asks you if you want to. Order from a different restaurant, it resets your cart. And say I don't, it keeps the cart. But if you do, then it resets the cart to only have that new item in there. And then finally, we can log out here and send it back to the sign in page. And then you can also sign in as a restaurant. So you can sign in as the Krusty Krab here and it shows all the past orders and then it shows the reviews as well, same as last time. But you can also, this is where I have the, the crud stuff. You have a menu section where you can see all the all the menu items that you have. You can remove remove items, you can add items, and then you can update items. Like here, another modal. <laughs> but say I want to add some sushi Let's see here let's get a picture real quick all 
I'm gonna add some sushi. Nine ninety nine entree, and then it gets published right there. I want to remove it. I'll remove it. And yeah. Oh, finally, this registration page. If you don't have one, you can register, and it has a little bit of instructions here. Say my username is gonna be testing. And my password is going to be password. And it's going to be a user, first name Juan, profile picture. Um, let's just make it the sushi again as my profile picture. <laughs> let's post that in there. Oop. I might be having some issues with the registration page still. It's still in the works, but some validation errors, but that's okay. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome, looking good. <laughs> yeah, modals, modals, modals. <laughs> um, cool. Who has questions or comments about it? <laughs> Fish eating sushi, yeah. Going once. Okay. Uh, who would you like to go next? Um, let's pass it over to John. I wish I could go. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have anything to present with you guys today, but everything so far looks great. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the uh, like what you've been struggling with with the project and kind of um, like what parts? what parts have been harder and what parts have been like fun or good to work on? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I had anticipated it'd be a little bit easier to kind of, uh, I thought it'd be easy if I could just, you know, oh, like take that API I've been using and just kind of work backwards from it. Um, but it turns out Google's API stuff is actually pretty complicated and it's like, everything's like super nested. Um, <laughs> so what I am uh, having to do now is kind of manually uh, put everything in so like for example like the video feed you see um, with like the thumbnails and stuff all those thumbnails are generated from the video but because I'm using a flashback and I can't I haven't really figured out how to do that so I'm gonna have to either add like a thumbnail uh, thumbnail video and then you know also add the video URL and all sorts of stuff and it's just like ah uh, so yeah building out the back end it, it, it proved to be a lot more difficult uh, a lot more complicated uh, and then adding in you know, like the cascades and then you have like all these uh all these backend models like uh such have a bunch of foreign keys that go along with it and yeah my it, like the way I, the way i had built the app originally to, to, to take that api just wasn't working so i, I basically like gutted everything <laughs> and, <laughs> and started like started adding things in uh from scratch just to see if i could get it on paper and it did but it's just like uh Cool. I mean, uh, what, what parts? Uh, what parts have you been having a good time with with it? I I, re I really like the material UI. Um, I I took a real deep dive into that. Um, the only thing I don't like is how difficult it is to like the style some of their stuff. Like you have to you have to legit make a new function just to like change the color of like I don't know a text box. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um. Sweet. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing it in the coming week or so. Uh, I think. All we have left is Maddox, right? Your last one? Yes. All right. Let's see what we got. Um, let's see. This should work. Let me know if you can't hear this. Um, but I made like a game library with reviews, and you can see other users' reviews and all that. Yeah, I think we're not getting audio through there. Oh, wait, I saw the button. <laughs> There we go. 
No, you should be able to so you'll get uh, my game library capstone project. So when you first load up the site, you'll get, uh, you'll see this welcome, please log in or sign up. So I'll go ahead and log in. And then once you're signed in, you can go to this all games tab and see all the list of all the games that are on the site. But if you don't see what you're looking for, you can go over here and add a new game. So I will go ahead and do that. And add a game. It'll show up here. I can add that to my library. Or if I add one that's already in my library, I get an alert that says it's already added. So now if I head over to library, I can see all these games and see the reviews for them. I already wrote one for this game, uh, nearly flawless game. And then someone named Brian also wrote a five-star review for this game. Um, but say I want to write a review for Overwatch. I'll give it three stars. Uh, decent. And paste it. And then it'll redirect me back here to the Overwatch 2 reviews. Um, and then say I want to change something on my profile. I can edit it. And uh, let's just add my last name in here. And I'll just delete a chunk of this. And so now it says Maddox Rose's profile and then the new bio. And I can log out and sign up. And let's do Maddox. And sign up. And I can go to uh, Overwatch, for example, and see reviews, and I can see that review I just posted. Thank you. Nice. And then I forgot to mention it in the video, but you can also remove games from your library as well. <laughs> cool. Um, anything else you want to say about it? Uh, no, not really. It was, it was fun to work on, though. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, anyone else have questions or comments? Last shot. <clears throat> all right. Uh, that is all of our capstone presentations that we have here. Um, these all look great, uh, everyone. Um, you all put in lots of hard work on this, and it really shows. Um, it's really cool to see all the all everyone's different ideas. Um, <clears throat> great. Y'all are done with the work part. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to stop the recording and we'll talk a little bit about what happens next. And uh, yeah, cool. Uh, recording stopped.